Okay, we're going to take a look at Hannibal, Rome versus Carthage. This was a game um, designed by Mark Simonich and published by Avalon Hill in 1996. And it was one of the early card-driven games. And uh, actually one of my favorites. It's an absolute classic. Now, um, it was republished by Valley Games and they did a very nice edition too. But we're looking at the original one. And uh, we're going to look at the components, and I'll tell you a little bit about this uh, classic game. Now, I had um, not played the game in years, and I just came back to it recently. And a friend and I played it, and we kind of balled things up, because we missed this rather uh, important errata card that comes with the original edition. Uh, that's been fixed up, I might point out, in the second edition. If you get the Valley Games edition of the rules, which is available online, uh, that errata is in there. It has to do with the battle cards, and uh, without that errata, the game is kind of uh, messed up. So that's all I'll say about that. Just play with the second edition rules, or the errata, and you'll be fine. So we're going to take a look at this uh, uh, just classic. It's just a beautiful game, very balanced, and it's my favorite game on the Punic War. Look at the cards and uh, how the game works. And I'll show you some of the uh, nice figures that uh, Valley Games uh, put out for the second edition. Let's take a look at the counters first. Okay, we're just going to zoom in here uh, on a portion of Sicily to show you some of the leader counters. Now, um, this is uh, one of the Roman leaders, Tiberius Longinus, and the little circular 2 is his strategic ability, and the little square number is his battle ability. Now, the uh, counters are on these long rectangular um, markers, we'll say, and then they're mounted on these little plastic bases to have them stand upright. So there's some Carthaginians, Hano, Gizgo, and Mago, and you get a whole bunch of Amer uh, American ones, <laughs> Roman ones, Fabius, Gaius, Nero, Flaminius, and so on. So that's what the leader counters look like. Now the Valley Games edition, if you got in on the ground floor and pre-ordered, they offered these uh, beautiful three-dimensional uh, leaders on little bases. They were quite nice. Uh, they had Carthaginians and the Romans, of course, and all of the uh, figures in different poses. So they did a very, very nice job on them. They also gave you some little decals to put the uh, game material uh, on the base. Uh, the only problem with it was the, uh, the glue on these bases. was uh, The men kept falling off. I don't know what this material was made of, but uh, it was very hard to find a glue that actually worked and uh, so the figure would stay on. Now a friend of mine, he painted these up for me and uh, he did a beautiful job on them. Uh, I don't have that kind of painting ability. And when I show you the game, I'm going to, of course, use these nice little figures here. Um, here's Hannibal. Uh, you can see when painted up, these uh, figures are just just beautiful. But it's not the figures that make this game. This is a uh, fantastic game in its own right. Let's look at some of the other counters. Okay, here are a few more counters. These are the generic strength points. Those are Romans, of course, uh, the Carthaginians, and the Carthaginians have some elephant counters. These are the siege point counters. When you're laying siege to a city, you try to accumulate these points. And there's a special marker for the uh, Carthaginian siege train, if you happen to get it. In the background there are the control markers. So red are Roman. Any space that has a red marker on it is Roman controlled. If it later becomes under Carthaginian control, it's flipped uh, to the Carthaginian side. Now here you have towns. The little square ones are fortified towns. So there is the town of Syracuse, currently under Roman control. If the Carthaginians capture it, you flip it over to the Syracuse side. Now also in the game are these uh, tribes counters. They represent um, tribes that were either li loyal to Rome or Carthage at the time, or neutral. In this case we have a blue marker, therefore it's uh, loyal to uh, Carthage. If you flip to the other side you can see the name of the tribe, the Brutium tribe. Uh, up here you've got uh, the Ligurians, they're neutral. And you have several other tribes up there. Now in the game, your Carthage is trying to 
dominate the Mediterranean by making most of those places on the map blue. And of course the Romans are trying to deny that and make most of the Mediterranean red. And it's a very balanced game, I understand. It's been a tournament at WBC for years, and uh, it is certainly one of the uh, more popular card-driven games. I'm not very good at it as the Carthaginian. The Carthaginian strategy has always eluded me. I'm trying to uh, improve on my uh, game in that respect. Now I'm going to show you some of the cards. Um, they're a little bit primitive by today's standards, but you know, who cares? It's the game that matters. And um, this game is going into a third edition, I believe. Um, and uh, God knows what they're going to do with that. Apparently they're going to add some uh, variants that were uh, later in the general magazine. And uh, I hope they do a nice job of it, because this is one fine game. Let's take a look at the strategy cards. Okay, that's the backs of the strategy cards. They're thin and easy to shuffle. It's kind of nice. Now the graphics um, are kind of that pen and ink stuff that was quite popular at the time. So um, we've gone to full color cards now in the latest generations of uh, CDG games. But these are perfectly functional. They have the uh, numbers that we're used to, the operational points, and the historical event or game event with using an illustration. And some of these cards um, you know, have major effects. Here, for example, is a minor campaign. A little wee sailing boat up here indicates it could be used to for uh, naval uh, movement. Your Sophonispa uh, card, a lady who seduced a Numidian king. There's lots of um, neat um, events in here. This one is a particularly rough one for the Carthaginian. Numidia revolts. If the Roman player pulled that on you, he could remove every one of the blue markers from either eastern or western Numidia. So some of these uh, cards have some really dire effects. And the way they work with each other uh, is really interesting. Um, the little color coding here, the black and white, means that either side can use the card, of course. Um, and uh, if it's one color, the dark or the light, uh, it either indicates you can the Roman player can use the card or the Carthaginian. So, uh, white, for example, is a Carthaginian card. And here's another Carthaginian one. So you've got a whole host of cards here. Uh, this game is just uh, excellent. Uh, I can see why it's going into a third printing. Now the battle system did not use a combat um, CRT table. It used these battle cards. And this is where the game really, really shone. It, it was just fantastic. Loved it. Um, later CDG games didn't always embrace this kind of combat system, but it's too bad. It slowed the game down slightly, but it was just fascinating the way these things works, worked. So I'm going to show you a little example of how they worked and uh, get an idea of why the battle system is so neat. Okay, and I'll try to show you a very crude example of a battle, and uh, this will explain the system a bit better. Let's say for the sake of argument, um, we had a battle going on at Agrigentum that Tiberius Longinus attacked Hanno here at this space. And we'll see that Hanno is the defender. So what you do is you'd shuffle the battle cards, which I'm going to do right now. And in this case, Tiberius Longinus would get five battle cards because of his strength of five. And he would add one more battle card um, because of his battle rating of one. So he would get six cards. And I'll deal out six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, there are other modifiers that could modify this battle, but for the sake of this uh, crude example, I'll keep it very simple. And in this case, Hanno would get three cards for his combat results and two for his battle rating, so he would get five cards. All right. Now, I can't really show this to you uh, very well with this camera, but um, in this case, Tiberius Longinus will be going first because he's the attacker. Well, just look at his cards. He's only got six. You can see he's got a bit of a variety. He's got uh, two frontal assaults, 
to flank left and flank right. Now, he doesn't know what the Carthaginian hand is, but the Carthaginian hand has got a flank right, a double envelopment, frontal assault, a probe, and another frontal assault. So, I really shouldn't have looked at that. Yeah. Let's yeah. say that um, the uh, Roman player, since his strong suit seems to be, he's got two frontal assaults and two flank lefts. Let's say he opens up the battle with um, his frontal assault card. So he plays the frontal assault card like such. The Carthaginian player must then match that card. If he doesn't, he's in trouble. So we look over at the Carthaginian hand. He does have a frontal assault and announces that he's going to match that. So he does. He put the card down as so. Now, what Hanno will want to do is try to gain the initiative. In other words, go first and direct the battle. So he's going to roll a die. And his battle rating is 2. He'll have to roll a 1 or 2 to gain the initiative. He rolls the die. He gets a 2. Thus, Hanno now becomes the attacker. Now, Hanno figuring, remember, he can't see the, the uh, Roman cards, figures, well, I better not play frontal assault because the Roman player probably has several frontal assault cards. So he decides to play this double envelopment card as the attacker. So, the Roman player must go to his cards, looks at them, and he doesn't have a double envelopment card, and that's not very good for him. Thus, he's lost the battle because he has not been able to match the double envelopment card. Now, what does that mean? Well, you've had two rounds of battle. So what you then have to do is you go to the attrition table and look on this one, two rounds, and you'd roll the die to see what the casualties for each side are. You roll the die. In this case, it's a three. No losses. See, well, that doesn't sound like much. Yeah, well, because Hanno won the battle, Tiberius Longinus has got to retreat. So there's still the retreat table. So Longinus's strength is five. He's got to go to the retreat table. And he rolls on this table here. And he rolls the die. It's a five, he lose four strength points. You can see that virtually destroys his army. The five would become a one. Now that's a crude example of how the battle system works. But I can tell you, when you get into a battle, let's say with 15 or 20 cards on each side, it really becomes interesting because the permutations of having uh, 20 cards on each side really becomes tension-filled. Let's look at the map and overall how you win the game. Okay, I mentioned that overall what the Carthaginian player is trying to do is he's trying to convert these red spaces to blue and the Roman, of course, is trying to do the opposite, convert the blue spaces to red. Now these spaces that don't have any counters at all, you'll want to fill in. So let's say it's your turn and it's the Roman turn. He decides, well, I've got a one card. Yeah, I think I'll put a PC marker down there in Ida Bia. So you might put one, let's say, here at Ilerda. And uh, the Carthaginian player can do the same. Uh, kind of reminiscent of Washington's war, actually, as you put PC markers down. But the game isn't just about placing PC markers. The game is about trying to take PC markers off from your enemy and that's a lot harder to do. You can do it with a straight card, card event, like that Eastern Namidia Revolt event I showed you, or you can go in with troops. In this case, let's say Hannibal goes to here and then later on he has to spend a card to convert that space. There's no free flipping of uh, control markers in this game as there as it exists in so many other games. So this is a very tough game of trying to convert these spaces. Now, in the appropriate victory phase, the Roman player will add up his provinces, and the Carthaginian will add up his that he owns, and the one that has the higher subtracts from the lower. So if the uh, Roman had nine provinces controlled, and the uh, Carthaginian had, let's say, I don't know, seven, uh, the Carthaginian would have to remove two control markers in his turn. I think there's 18 provinces total. Some of the provinces don't count. 
uh, for points. Now, what I've done on my map, uh, this is not on the original, I've just put some little red dots on the provinces that can be controlled by Rome. I just find it a lot easier to uh, add up the provinces. And I put little green dots. These are just stickers. They don't harm the board uh, on provinces that are neutral. And I put little blue dots on um, provinces that uh, are Carthaginian. And I put a little wee NP for no points on these ones that don't, don't garner you points. So what you have is a classic game of uh, deception and uh, combat. Uh, it's one fine game. Now there's all kinds of chrome in here that are really neat, but I won't get into that. I'll just mention them briefly. That um, Rome, uh, being a republic at this time, re-elected consuls each year, and there's a whole phase for re-electing uh, leaders. Uh, you put the little consul markers, named named leaders, in a cup, and uh, you draw them randomly each turn. So the Roman player will not know who the two consuls are going to be for that year. They can also name a proconsul, which more or less gives them three leaders on the board at any one time. What you'll usually do is make your best leader your proconsul. Now their best leader, Scipio Africanus, when he comes in on what, three, four, five, on turn six, each turn represents a year in uh, Hannibal, and it covers the entire Punic War. Scipio is their best commander. He uh, moves well, fights well, and of course Hannibal has got some of the best battle ratings, battle rating of four, and a uh, strategy rating of one. So, I don't know, when you play this game with, um, you know, these nice little uh, counters on them, these, these three-dimensional counters, this game really comes alive. So, um, that's all I've got to say about Hannibal. It's a classic card-driven game. It's one of my favorites. Um, I've been playing it for the last few years because uh, there's just so many games to learn and... Uh, you know, you're only, only so much gaming time. But I've come back to it. I think it's a great game. And I'm very glad to see that uh, it's going into a third edition. So, um, good introductory game for um, for Card Driven Game 2. And on Board Game Geek, uh, guys have made uh, some very helpful charts and stuff. Uh, here's one uh, somebody made for a province control chart. So, um, there's lots out there supporting it. Um, Again, I just mentioned, watch out if you're playing with the original rules. Watch out for that errata. And um, let's hope that Hannibal comes back in print. And uh, anyway, that's an introduction to this very fine game. Hannibal, thank you for watching.